So this question was brought up to my attention by E1, who is a member in my Discord channel. And I thought it was a good one. I, th I thought it was an honest question that uh, a newer player might ask. How does one farm for food champions? Meaning, how do you guys get food to farm up so that you can rank up and level them up? Do I do campaign for mystery shards or something? Yes. His main thing was, I don't have any green shards right now. What do I do? Where do you get green shards? Where do you get food to rank up champions so you can do this right here? So that you can have a bunch of food to either level up. Well, I guess just a bunch of food to level up and then rank them up. That way you can get your five stars and then your six stars, right? There's a few places you can get food from. You could go to the market and oftentimes you can find food here and just straight up buy them like this if they're available. And another place to get them is just by farming campaign. Oftentimes when you're farming campaign, you will, as a reward, either get a champion or you will get green shards. It's the same thing if you are running the dungeons. Anytime you run a dungeon, you have a chance to receive shards, ancient shards and mystery shards. I don't know the exact rates. It's something that you could look up. I mean, I guess I could just look it up for you guys real quick. Shouldn't take too long. Just pull it up in here. Ancient shard drop rate in dungeons for breed. All right, so Hell Hades says sure you guys can see me where can you get shards there are a lot of places daily from clan boss yes doom tower daily quest login rewards the markets okay you get five ancients a month that's true in the shop you get a f one free green one per day and then one blue one each week through achievement and progress missions campaign dungeons here you go dungeon drops it's a point 5% chance to get an Ancient Shard during Dragon Runs. I don't know if there's a limit on that. Events, tournaments, and then 3v3. Bizarre. 3v3? Oops. Let me see, 3v3. Let me see that 3v3. In the Bizarre. Yeah. So here in the Bizarre, you can actually get an Ancient Shard. I've shown you guys this before, actually. Void Shards and Sacred Shards. This is on a one-month cooldown, though. I think this is a one-week cooldown. But specifically for the Green Shards, I would do... Your campaign runs as normal, and, and then I would do your dragon or your dungeon run runs as normal. What is the best way to rank up your food? So the, the general consensus when I was growing up in raid was that you basically do 12-3 over and over again. So 12-3 is the campaign mission. So you come to campaign, you would ideally go to brutal, but if you can't do brutal, then just do hard. Then if you can't do hard, you can do normal. But basically, 12-3 was the stage to do, because you get shields, and shields sell for a lot more than any other artifact piece. Do the run, you get your shield, you sell the shield, and you also level up your champions, because it was the most efficient way to get some silver, and the most efficient way to level up your champions at the same time. I would like to note that if you care more about XP, 12-6 actually nets a lot more XP than just... 12-3, but you do want to sell shields over booths just for silver. Hell Hades actually came out with a video talking about a new meta. Let's see what he says. Hey guys, this is Hell Hades, free to play 2024. Yeah, we're on day six. And today I want to try and help you challenge what everybody has said for years and years and years yeah. when you are coming through this game. And I, I will I will kind of like precursor what we're going to go through today. I'm not quite there yet on my free-to-play. But then I'm on day six, stroke seven, depends on how you look at it. We started right before reset, day one. So actually kind of day one and day two blur into one day. Uh, but yeah, in honesty, we're on day six. And I've got you know a kale farming up champions uh i've actually got myself rapalos last night and i've got one two three four and a half chicken so hopefully we'll have rapalos in action from tomorrow and we'll be able to test him out and see how much of an impact he has immediately on a free-to-play account um but today we're going to be looking at where should i farm 
And this is something which uh, has, has gone through the ages. If you go back on any content creators' videos, uh, I think probably Chosen or Incredible John are the OGs. They will have videos telling you exactly where to farm, where it's efficient. I've got multiple videos doing the same since I've been a content creator, etc. Right, So it's not new news, but actually I think we could just change the way we think about this a little bit. So the place everyone will tell you to go and farm is get yourself to Brutal. When you're in Brutal, get 12, yourself three, to Brutal. 12-3, exactly what I just said. And farm stage 12-3. It's good and sounding it looks like he... spider. And yeah. I'm, I'm not here yet. So I'm going to be clear. I'm not here yet, but this is a genuinely good place to farm. Stage 10, you get an abnormal amount of five-star drops in stage 10 versus 11, 12, 13. Yeah. yeah, it's the best place to farm for spider. Uh, I talked about that too in a few videos, but stage 10 has a higher percentage to drop five-star gear than any of the other stages that precedes it. It's like an... I think it's like an 80% chance for some reason. It's a bug and Polarium's just not going to fix it. But not everybody seems to know about it. I mean a good a good majority of people know it, but but uh but no. It's not gonna get fixed. So stage 10, if you're looking for early on, if you're looking for better gear, I would say do stage 10. That is until you can start doing stage 13, where you can potentially start getting the six star gear. Uh, right the way until you could do stage 16 on auto and for an earlier player it's it might even be the best place to farm for anything okay so spider we can do the same kale with four food champions none of them with any gear on with the same build and it's, it's a starter build don't forget i'm day six here and we can do the same thing but now we're getting xp for an extra character an extra champion but also our silver jump goes up okay plus we get the chance yeah. to actually get items that we want. So this this is starting to kind of make sense to me because what I do right now as an end game player, if I need silver, I immediately or I immediately go to Spider. Spider is where I go for silver because you can get hundreds of thousands, millions of silver, and that's that's just more than you're ever going to get selling shields on twelve three. And this is then. This is then the kind of like um, the balance. Obviously, it's more energy to run it. I'm going to go through the math of how this works out in a minute. And I'll go through the build of Kale in a minute as well. So you can kind of see what we're doing. But ultimately... And, you know, he, he made a good point to talking about potentially getting artifacts that will be useful to your account. This makes sense because when you're growing your account, you need gear for your champions anyway. You need that gear. It's a much longer run, but we've got a finite amount of energy. We're free to players, right? Or, you know, we're new players. Maybe you don't you haven't invested yet in in your account. And the thing with Kale is he's got very cool skills to do this. So Kale, uh, as a starter champion, people have always kind of tapped him up, up as the best one. I've always agreed with that, by the way. Yeah. He's a really good clan boss champion, but he can do this and he can do um he can do uh, campaign farm really well, and he's good in dragon as well. So he's a really good early champion for your account but what makes him particularly good is when he does his nuke his a2 nuke he gets a ton of turn meter so he'll do his a1 here take a few hits nearly dies we're fine he does his nuke we heal up because we've got life still on and we get a load of turn meter because of his yeah. a2 his a2 draw or his a2 will boost per will boost turn meter i think it's like 15 percent per crit hit so that makes sense. It makes, like, my initial thinking is... I mean, he's already a minute in. Like, how long would these runs take? It, it's going to take a while. But if Kale is soloing... Well, I guess he did say... He did, he did mention that our resources are finite. So if you are a beginner free to play player and you are limited by the amount of resources you have, this actually does make sense. It might take a lot longer. I'm assuming this is going to take like what 3-4 minutes for one run, but I mean I could just walk away. It's not like I don't have freaking 3 or 4 or 5 other accounts to run anyway. 
right? We get to rotate through our abilities really quick. Wake up, Let's go again. Here. We get our accessory. Okay. This is a So yeah, card. three minutes. Oh. There you go. Three minutes and 112 turns. And you are leveling up some food here. Lot of five star items here. I'm going to show you soon uh, from my main account. And actually, it's it's kind of crap, but it is something that my Kale could put on right now and make him more effective in the short term. Exactly. Or I could sell it and get myself some silver in the bank. But you can see here, every character here, every hero. No, I keep calling them characters today. Every hero has got 27.56 XP. So you know, and I'm wondering right now as well well i mean this also here's here's what i'm looking at the screen and this is what i'm thinking Six thousand to begin with isn't a lot of silver especially when you're thinking about it in the context of it taking three and a half minutes but there is always the potential to get gear that might actually be useful or you could sell those artif uh, artifacts that will probably net more again it is taking three and a half minutes so are we am i measuring the amount of time it takes or the amount of energy it takes i think i should have been looking at the amount of energy it takes because that's the finite resource i mean technically time is finite and i it's not like i'm doing my six second runs anyway i guess if i really needed somebody to get leveled up super fast then I could take them into 12-3 and just solo farm with that one champion. That way that, that champion I want to level up gets all the XP. But this is also pretty cool because you're able to rank or you're able to level up four champions on the side as well. So yeah, I can see this being a good thing, a great thing. Four, not three. Okay, so you've got one extra champion that's leveling whilst um the xp level is is a fair amount less okay so we're going to work through the the map of this in a second if you did not want to use it for uh for leveling champions then you could definitely use it when you've got to do things like um win artifacts from a dungeon yeah and without auto selling so you could do this get these three away and then go back to campaign if that's oh, what you kind of blocking him sorry but anyway let's do some maps so the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to burn 480 energy in both areas. Okay, it's a small sample size, I will say. So, um, you know, this isn't perfect numbers, but uh, we're going to burn 480 energy on my main. Okay, so he's going to do uh, both 480 on campaign and then 480 on on spider, I think. He, I guess, plus some. Uh... All right, so 480 used, 1.2 million silver, some chickens shards again green shards campaign leveled up some guys here xp earned total 818 then he's i'm assuming he's going to do spider next right do the comparison look at the amount of five star drops that we've got we've got yeah. some epic pieces there's some rare pieces but there's a ton of five star gear that you get and again down here you see he got some greens from farming spider and that's that's like the main thing here it's like alternative use of your energy to get items whilst you're... Yeah, because uh, again, you know, a big thing, especially in my last video, I was talking about it. Gear is such a huge thing. Even if you know what to do, if you don't have the gear to do it, there's nothing you can do. So I, I need to be in the dungeons anyway doing this. So this makes sense. How much? So 480 spent 254,000 silver. What was... It was... Let's see... 254k versus 1.2k oh uh, yeah so. champions that's without selling the stuff campaign's going to be your thing but actually silver plus uh items with some some leveling is is actually pretty good here in spider let's go through the numbers um so for campaign we had 1.5 odd million worth of experience for spider it's more like 450,000. So it's about a third. Uh, in terms of silver, then let's sell all the items off. For campaign, we had 1.2 million. So we're going to sell this off. Don't forget, we just earned 400, uh, sorry, 250 odd thousand in the actual spider runs, plus another 1.186. So about just over 1.4 million worth of silver from spider. There's about an extra, what, 20 odd percent 
gain in silver. The more silver, we're still leveling champions, and we've got a bunch of drops that we can actually look at, which might benefit the account. Okay, yeah. so lastly, then let's just show you the build because it is just a base build. It's Kale as he comes. So yeah, that that makes sense, especially in the context of us having such a finite amount of resources. Uh, you know, I like the whole idea of having gear that I can use because I'm running my campaign right now, and I'm pretty much just selling everything. I'm not really keeping anything. If you want to know the fastest way to level up your account XP, not your champions, but your account, check out this video right here.